All right, we're here at my tiny worm bin, and today we are going to start an experiment, and that experiment is raw versus frozen food. And something I want to show you right away is look at how the worms have absolutely destroyed this packaging paper that has all this moisture on it. Now, what we did right when we ended our last feeding and our last video is we put this brand new paper on here and put a little piece of pumpkin on that. And I really like that because all I need to do is lift off the lid and I can see them devouring it. So it's more for me, but also a little food source for them. So let's jump in here and let's see how they did with our last feeding. And in that last feeding, it was a pretty colorful autumn type feeding. We had a big piece of corn cob right in the middle here. We had some pumpkin chunks on either side, some strawberry tops, carrot pieces, and an apple core. So let's go ahead and go through here. And one thing I want to point out real quick is this bin is 61 days old and it's been a couple weeks since we fed it. But right now this bin is looking really good and it's kind of making the transition between being mostly bedding to being about, I don't know, 50% bedding, 50% castings. So the bin is looking real well. The other thing is the moisture is getting retained pretty well. So we might think about taking the plastic off either this time or maybe even next time. And with that, with the moisture retaining in here so well, we've got to think about some of the bin critters that might get out of control. And mites are one of the things that I sometimes have issues with in here. And right here, I'm seeing some kind of white substance on here, and I think it's just mold. Just another thing that's helping to break down the bedding up in here. So let's go ahead and try and dig down and see if we can find that corn cob. I imagine the corn cob is going to be in here and mostly whole. So let me just put my fingers underneath and I think I'm feeling some worms, but let's go ahead and dump it over. And oh yeah, sure enough, there are a thousand worms in this bin and a lot of them have decided to come party at the corn cob. So we put this in and it had kernels all over it and they have eaten all those off or at least taken them off. And I imagine in here feels a little mushy there might be some worms trying to get in there. I don't know, let me see if I can break it in half. Oh, it's coming. And nope, they haven't gotten in there yet, but now we have two halves of a corn cob. So we'll put that to the side. And I estimated it was gonna take at least a month to fully break down. And now I'm thinking it may be there till the end of the lifespan of this bin or this run of the bin. So I'm just gonna kind of dig underneath and yeah, lots of castings. So this bin is really moist down here and producing a lot of castings. So that is good. Two months in and the bin is looking fantastic. Now, this bin has only been fed five times in those 61 days. And something I wanted to point out to you is you don't have to worry too much about am I feeding enough? If you have a lot of bedding, the worms are going to eat that bedding as long as it's moist. So the key is you really can't over bed a bin. You can't have too much bedding, but you can overfeed a bin. So if you're ever wondering if you're putting in too much food, just put in less, put in more bedding. Or if you're going on vacation or you're gonna be away from your worm bin, then certainly add more bedding and maybe a little bit more food. Let's say if you're gonna be gone two weeks and you usually feed weekly, so. Wow, looking, looking good. So what I'm gonna do is kind of mix in and spread it all around, get the parts that are dry and mix them up with the parts that are moist. And I think on either edge, we had a pumpkin piece, which I don't really expect to be around here any longer after 14 days. And sure enough, it's not. Even some of the toilet paper rolls that we put in here are kind of breaking down to the point where you can't really tell what they were. So let me get this kind of top side in these corners here. They are looking fantastic too. I'm really liking the moisture level as I dig down and I'm gonna kind of mix it up as we go. Lot Every time I move, there's all kinds of worms all over the place, well, kind of a juvenile right there. So they're all throughout, which is, you know, typical if you haven't fed for 14 days, they're kind of gonna go right for where all the food was, and then they'll kind of spread out and eat everything else. Let's get this back corner right here, and I think we also put in an apple core somewhere, so we'll see if we find that. I think this was the last piece of newspaper that we had on top before we put on that packaging paper. So yeah, in here, right around here, I think was where the apple was. 
and not really seeing it just just those corn cobs are the only thing that I think survived these thousand worms that are just eating up all the food scraps and these are all red wigglers so let me go ahead and make sure everything's mixed up and I'll start a feeding zone here all right so we've got our feeding zone right there let's go ahead and put in that packaging paper that we had on top it's kind of a lower level right there and then as always I'll add some dry shredded cardboard and a little bit of shredded paper to the bottom and then we'll put these corn cobs actually we're gonna put them to the side here put them on either side because we are gonna start our raw versus frozen experiment right in the middle all right so here is what we had in mind we have a frozen banana that is slightly thawed and then we have a raw banana, both out of service. <laughs> Don't really wanna use them for human consumption. I guess we can make banana bread, but anyway, frozen versus raw. So what we're gonna do is we are just gonna kind of oh, break them in the middle there. And we'll do that for both of them. We're gonna put one on one side and one on the other, and we'll see how they do. Now, I'm expecting that the flesh in both of them is gonna go pretty quick, but my guess is that the peel of the frozen one will go quicker than the peel of the raw one. I've done many experiments on raw versus frozen, so go ahead and check out those videos. But we're gonna do something else with these. We are gonna put one of the halves in these toilet paper roll holes. One, so we know which side is which, but also to see if the worms just absolutely fill these with castings. Now I see that when I just put these in without any food in them, but this is gonna be even more fun for me. So we'll put that there, and I think we'll put the banana right like that so we know that that is raw when we come and dig in. And we'll put the frozen one in here like that. And we'll see how that does. And uh, <laughs> I'm running out of room here. This is a tiny bin. So maybe I'll go opposite like that. So we've got frozen and we've got raw, and the worms can kind of go in wherever they want, and we'll see which does better, the frozen banana or the raw banana. And it's gonna be important that I get in here at maybe the five day point and check these out, because I expect the flesh to be gone in just a few days. So with that, we're still gonna go in with our amendments, and this is just some pulverized grains from expired stuff within my pantry. And maybe we'll even get a chance to see if they eat the amendments right off the top of these toilet paper tubes. Next, we're gonna put in some coffee grounds. And unfortunately, it's a little chunky. I should have broken those chunks up, but just another food source for them. They're eating the coffee beans that are just absolutely pulverized after I have made coffee with them. So this is spent coffee grounds. And then finally, we'll put in a little bit of eggshell grit. This is grit for the worms to use in their digestion, but also to put some calcium into my garden. So I just add this every time. So now let's just try and carefully bury this. And if I need to, I'll put some more dry bedding on top. But this bin is just an outstanding bin. I mean, when I first got it, it only had like 50 to 100 worms in it. And it now has over a thousand after about a year or so of running it. And this bin is, is small. So if you're thinking about doing a worm farm or getting into vermicomposting, a little bin like this might be useful to you to see if you really like it. They are a little bit harder to run because they can get out of whack with their parameters just because they're so small. But if you're careful and you don't overfeed, then it is very easy to maintain. And they're absolutely perfect for like an apartment or, you know, if you're single or just have one or two people in your family, then it's just the perfect size for vermicomposting. And even a college dorm, this would work just great. So I am going to add just a little bit of cardboard shreds over the top. By a little bit, I mean not a little bit. <laughs> I'm going to put more on because we're going to keep that plastic on and any of the liquid that's already in this bin is going to hit that plastic and come back down. So let's go ahead and put a new piece of paper over the top to kind of keep it dark and to help with the moisture control. And then finally, we'll add our plastic, which will definitely keep the moisture in. So that will about do it. We'll go ahead and check on this in about five days and we'll see how the frozen versus the raw goes. So I hope you're all doing well. I hope your worm bins are doing well. So happy vermicomposting everybody. Take care now.